Welcome to Hard and Trocken. In this video we are going to cover various topics regarding sums. First we will dive a little deeper into the use of the summation notation, which we have introduced in one of our earlier videos. Suppose we have a general expression like this. Remember that that means that we have to sum up the expression ai plus bi as many times as there are integer numbers between m and n, both included. The index i is called summation index and runs through the integer values starting from m and ending at n. It's a nice little exercise to figure out how many summons that sum will contain. That is equivalent to the question of how many integer values are there between m and n with m and n included. At a first glance, the difference between n and m, that is n minus m, might look like a good idea. However, as both m and n are included, it is even one more than that difference. Therefore, the answer is n minus m plus 1. However, this is not what I actually want to talk about. What I do want to talk about is a way of splitting up this sum in two sums using a summation notation for each sum. In fact, this expression is equivalent to this expression. In order to verify this fact, let's look at a specific example where m equals 1 and n equals 3. In this case, the extended version of the left-hand side of the equation looks like this whereas the extended version of the right-hand side looks like this. These two boxes, however, are equal, because they can be transformed into each other by a simple rearrangement of the summons. Now let's have a look at this expression. In this example, each summand of the summation notation contains the constant factor c. So this factor c is contained in every summand and doesn't change when the summation index is running. In this case, we are allowed to factor out that constant c over the complete sum, which equals... Again, this can be easily verified using an example where, for instance, m and n are equal to 1 and 3, where, again, both boxes are equal to each other. Now I want to demonstrate to you another nice little topic in the context of sums. It's a formula to easily calculate the sum of as many successive natural numbers as you wish. In other words, we want to have a formula to quickly calculate this sum. This is nothing else as the sum of all natural numbers starting at 1 and ending at n. Now the question is, what value does this expression have if we keep n general? That means I want to have a simple formula containing n which gives me the sum of all these natural numbers, including 1 and n, without knowing n. The formula we are looking for is well known as der kleine Gauss, which means the little Gauss. There is this story that when Karl Friedrich Gauss was a very young student, he got punished by his teacher for something he did. The punishment was to sum up the first 100 natural numbers. The young Gauss, however, surprised his teacher by presenting the solution after only a short time. It is said that he discovered that little trick we're going to look at now. If I want to sum up the first n natural numbers, I can write this sum down as we just did. I've just rewritten that long sum by using some more of the beginning and of the ending numbers. Now the idea of the young Gauss was to write down that sum once more, but in reverse order. So let's try that. So if we denote by x the value of this sum, which we are looking for, both of these expressions, the blue one and the orange one, are equal to x. Now the trick is that when we try to sum up both of these equations, we get a surprisingly simple result. Now, for reasons of clarity, let's first erase all plus signs. Now, let's build the following pairs of summons at the same positions. Now, if we look a little closer at these pairs, we find something very nice. Every two numbers within one given pair add up to n plus 1. That is, of course, the case for the first pair. 
But it is also the case for the second pair, because n minus 1 plus 2 is again n plus 1. And it's also true for the third one, because 3 plus n minus 2 is also n plus 1. And looking at the three last pairs, we also find that n minus 2 plus 3 also equals n plus 1, which finally also holds for the last two boxes. Now, because we are adding both of these two equations, we of course also have to sum up the left-hand sides, which is simply 2x. Now, the question remains, how many of these n plus 1 expressions are there? The answer is n because we are adding up n boxes, which we can even see by the numbering. 1, 2, 3, and so on, until n. So these are n boxes. So all together, that white box with all these n plus 1s equals n times n plus 1. All together, that gives us the following equation for our unknown x. Remember that x itself is a variable which we introduced to shortly write exactly the sum we are looking for. So if we take the equation within the blue box and divide it by 2, we get an expression for x. So that is exactly the formula the young Gauss found. For any natural number n, this gives us the sum of all natural numbers running from 1 up to n. The formula to calculate the sum of the first n natural numbers is called an explicit formula because we can directly input the value n and calculate the formula with only a few calculation steps. We can try to find explicit formulas for many more sum expressions. For instance, this one. This is not the sum of the first n natural numbers, but this is the sum of the first n square numbers. So that looks like something like this. The explicit formula for that sum is not much more complicated than the little Gauss. In fact, it looks like this. However, to find this explicit formula is indeed more complicated compared to the way how we found the little Gauss. Anyway, in mathematics, all is about proofs. So if we are presented with this formula, like you are right now, we should only trust and believe that formula when we have a complete proof that that formula is correct for any n you choose. In fact, there is an elegant and easy way to prove that this explicit formula is right for all n. The method I'm referring is called proof by induction, a topic which we will discuss in another video. Another application of a proof by induction is to verify the formula for the sum of the first n cubic numbers. That's it for this video. See you next time.